Welcome to D Conversations, a rather excellent podcast if you're listening and a webinar if you're watching, discussing all things related to medical devices decontamination. Brought to you by Dan Cole, the instrument maker, Matthew Pescott, entrepreneur and former sterile services manager, and Pavel de sternberg stylovsky a research and development engineer. Welcome to another exciting episode of Deconversations. Delighted that we're joined by Nancy and Maxime from Ultrasonic in Belgium. So we're very, very excited about this episode and um, covering pre-cleaning uh, around flexible endoscopy and also hopefully a bit about ultrasonics. Um, so welcome to you both. If you wouldn't mind just giving us um, a, a and welcome, of course, to my co-host, Pavel, with the ever-growing beard, which uh, has been remarked that he's now uh, grown and grown from episode one, and, and of course, Matthew. So, guys uh, from Ultrasonic there, if you could give us a bit of an intro into, into yourselves and, and what you do, please. Okay. I will start with myself. So, uh, my name is Nancy Steen Backers. Very, very, uh, very difficult to pronounce. But, uh, so, I, I was a nurse for 20 years, um, and... Uh, you know, as an assistant in OR, I had to uh, to explore everything. So not only assistance with the, with the surgery, but also with the cleaning of instruments. And that moment, I found out that it was really very, very difficult to to clean those instruments. And at that time, we had a lot of patients uh, with uh, some infections. So um, that's that's my experience. So after 20 years <clears throat> of uh, that that part of life, let's say. Um, I, um, I I stopped to do uh, to, to being a nurse, uh, and uh, I really wanted to to, to invent uh, new systems, better systems. Um, but I couldn't find it in the world. So uh, there are washer disinfectors which are wonderful, good. I was distributing uh, sterilizers, washer disinfectors, and uh, and all that stuff. But still, there are many issues. So um, and that's why after four years ago, we invented a new our, our own. Uh, devices, and uh, beside that, um, in my opinion, it's, it's the most needed uh, in uh, at the moment. So that's what I did. Uh, so I will give now the word on uh, Maxine, <laughs> my assistant. Uh, she's uh, doing very good job. So please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So uh, I'm uh, Maxine Arts. Um, I work at Ultrasonic almost for uh, three years. Um, but I did uh, for studies journalism, so I was looking for a job where I can really uh, share an interesting story. Um, and when I first saw the company, um, I really needed to look up, okay, what do they do endoscopes? Because it's all a little bit for the, the normal people, how do you say, so the people who are not in the medical business, it's a little bit difficult to know what we are doing or what endoscopes are things like that but i'm very happy uh, to have started here because every day i still learn many different insights on endoscopes or surgical instruments and how to clean them and most of all uh, things i didn't know um, in advance so um, not just me but also in the medical field so it's quite an interesting journey I've already done so far, but I'm um, looking forward to spending my next years here as well. So this is who I am now. <laughs> Great. No, thank, thank you both. Um, and uh, Maxime, you're certainly right. It's a very exciting industry to be in, I'm sure, coming into it. And um, I just remarked that I think I met Nancy maybe four, could be four years ago at, at Medica, after seeing um, some of your information on LinkedIn and walk, walked past your booth and saw this uh, really innovative machine. I don't know much about flexible endoscopes and I didn't at the time, but I was just quite struck by how um, advanced this looked um, from, from an innovation perspective. Things such as recording, uh, filming the process taking place, um, a really uh, obviously computerized system. But so, Obviously, th it's great that things are developing there. So I, I have a question just around why is it that cleaning the flexible endoscopes is so difficult? And um, and on pre-cleaning particularly, why is that so important, please? Okay, so uh, before I was distributor for washing disinfectors and drying cabinets. And um, 
Um, it was a very uh, exciting time because uh, I didn't know anything about washing disinfection of endoscopes, uh, but uh, learning day by day and uh, having more and more experience with the washer disinfectant. So I was a distributor for Cantel. And uh, we, we, you know, Belgium, after all, it's not the, the, the big spot in the world, but still also in Belgium, there are many, many issues on cleaning of endoscopes. So in a, in a, in a certain moment, we had some, so really some issues in, in hospitals um, about the water quality, about... Wait, wait. Ah, okay, sorry. Sorry, my husband, he was... <laughs> Can you cut it? <laughs> sorry. He didn't do it, was a false cost. Yeah, okay, misunderstanding. Um, okay. But um, right, right. that moment I was um, uh, observing quite a lot of hospitals, how they were um, performing the manual cleaning. And uh, some of the, those hospitals, they didn't have any sink to perform the manual cleaning. Others, they, they just brush in a dry channel. Uh, others, they um, they don't have any clue uh, about the importance of uh, water temperature. Uh, the, if, I, if I was asking them what kind of chemistry are you using during the manual cleaning, they couldn't answer me. Uh, what is the contact time if you're manual cleaning? They couldn't answer me, you know. Many, many questions were with, without any answer. Even when the nurse was even working for more than 25 years in, in endoscopy department. So I was really surprised. So everybody was... Uh, let's say focusing on the washer disinfector, the, desin the washer disinfector, because uh, everybody's still thinking that's the magic box, but it's not the magic box at all. So and, and uh, even when they they were investing in the magnificent in those magnificent washer disinfectors and drying cabinets, still there were so many issues, and that's what we see in every single hospital all over the world. There are still many issues about cleaning of endoscopes, so that's why we have to take more focus on the manual pre-cleaning. Okay. Absolutely Thank fantastic. You, uh, you know, this whole uh, problem of uh, the lack of uh, knowledge, the lack of uh, information and systems uh, is, is something that we see pretty much uh, everywhere worldwide. And I wanted to ask a question specifically that uh, relates to pre-cleaning uh, and ask you what elements do you find most challenging uh, in this process, and which of those elements are the most critical for the patients? Okay, well, of course, our our full focus on, is on patient safety. Um, the first um, um, the first problem that we saw is a misunderstanding in leakage test um, because of winning of time because they are short in time, whatever they or they do the leakage test, but then on the wrong way. So they just soak the what the endoscope on the water and they they pump it up with uh, with, uh, with with air to find out the bubbles, which is a totally wrong way. Um, um, sometimes I say no, the leakage test is not is not useful because you know we know it by heart that when we are um, examining a patient that we didn't damage any endoscope, that the endoscope is not damaged. I say, okay, are you, do you have a, glo a, a, a globe that you can, you know, uh, with, with, narrow, uh, with some uh, different visions? But they say, they couldn't answer. They said, no, 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 we don't have time. It's not important. You know, the washer disinfector and uh, the, the next patient is waiting. The, the, that's the, the leakage test at the moment, uh, and I'm very happy to, to see that. So. We are doing it, we are performing it, and I really want to advise and, and I train also a lot of hospitals to perform the leakage test on the dry way during two minutes with minimum 200 millibar. So, and, and everybody says, yeah, but how, how, why do you know that and why, why don't we know that? And I say, yeah, because, you know, when you, you have to read the manual of an endoscope and, and unhappily, it's uh, when, you, when you read the manual of, of uh, Olympus, for example, from page 15 till page 37, it's explained how to perform uh, the manual cleaning, but it's not mentioned how much millibar you have to respect. It's not meant that they just uh, say, okay, you soak your endoscope on the water, you have to figure out the bubbles. That's the first thing. The next thing is, all right, after the leakage test, everybody goes with the, those brushes through the channels with, without rinsing the channels, without uh, getting the channels full full completed with uh, detergents and water so they don't have any clue about the water temperature they don't know the contact time of the of the chemistry so they just brush 
and uh, and after the brush they they put it in the washer disinfector so they're they're skipping two steps minimum and uh and and that's what i want to perform okay if you really perform every single pre-cleaning step it takes maybe 15 minutes to do it on the right way and then everybody's complaining yeah we don't have that time and uh although you know 15 minutes for a pay for to 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 realize a patient safe environment in endoscopy is not that that big that big deal but for for the physicians and uh, hospitals it's really a big deal because they think they're losing money that time sure sure i mean it's uh, well i think we we on some of the previous episodes a lot of the time we're talking about time pressures aren't we guys and yeah. well you know yeah. there seems to be so many innovative solutions including um on the sort of washer disinfector and general side of instruments that it seems to be a common theme um which obviously is not the right way and maxime just just quickly i just just interested you coming from a different industry and and into this industry and hearing things like that you know as as a somebody would you know would have been potentially a patient was that quite a, a shock to you that it's not a standard that the processes are followed uh, yes, it, it definitely was a shock uh, for me um, because as a patient, when you go into a hospital, you always expect to be in the most clean, sterilized environment there is. You're in good hands, you're in safe hands. And hearing all those numbers, that's why it was really a shock to me. Not only to me, because I always speak with my friends now, my family, they always ask, what, what job do you do? What do you do? Because they don't understand my job. And then I explain and then they're like, no, no, it's not true. When you go to a hospital, everything's fine. When you go to an endoscopy, it's all safe. And then when I lay down the, the numbers, they're also in shock. So it's not just me. Most of the people are quite um, certain that they will undergo an endoscopy or um, um, an operation and everything's going to be fine. Um, but it's our job to mostly raise awareness on this topic. So this is why uh, you also mentioned uh, social media channels. We're really trying to make big efforts in educating the people. First, raise awareness, then education. So these are the two most important things. We also believe that the field still misses. And it's not their fault. It's also because of the time pressure. Everything needs to go so quickly. And these are two points we really want to make a big change because if there is no awareness and people are not well educated we can't we can't make big steps forward so yeah and it's not only the, the issue with the, the education of course but also the motivation yes because uh, i saw many things all over the world in every single hospital many things and then you see uh, quite a lot of staff performing the manual pre-cleaning and depending of of their uh, of course the knowledge education but also their motivation. Most of them who are standing there, they are not, they're not interested to do that job on a proper way. Mm -hmm. So these, 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 these human mistakes, we have to avoid that. that. Yes. No, I, I think that this is a fantastic point, Nancy, about uh, about motivation. And uh, I uh, I've always been um, uh, sort of amazed how you guys try to uh, educate the um, uh, not only your your customers but the general field about the problems that we have, because a lot of the motivation is going to come from the understanding of potential consequences of uh, of failures and uh, and uh, and the understanding of the risk that uh, um, every single technician uh, is responsible for an instrument and that the cleanliness of that instrument the the quality of reprocessing has a direct impact on on patients well-being so uh, yeah I, I absolutely see this this element of, of motivation being embedded in uh, in your education efforts yeah okay thank you very much we're doing <laughs> every day 100 percent uh we put every day 100 percent of energy on that so uh, which is in my opinion the most important mm -hmm. yeah excellent pavel did you want to Take us forward with the next question, please. Uh, certainly. So when we were talking about, uh, you know, the, the the challenges and the most critical elements for um, uh, for the for the patients, um, we are sort of 
whenever we are thinking about pre-cleaning in general, we are always seeing this as uh, almost like a manual process. We see that in the back of our heads that this is a process that happens and people sort of do something to those endoscopes. So I wanted to ask here, what, what, are the, what, what is the place of technology? What sort of technologies we can bring to, um, uh, to sterile services and to endoscopy reprocessing to, uh, to make this pre-cleaning uh, simpler, easier, and more effective? Well, um, <laughs> big question, and uh, I have some answers in mind, but the thing is that um, as long as we just have a simple sink, uh, we know a simple a sink cannot talk. It's, it's the same like with, with the washer disinfectants before. There, was no, there were no washer disinfectants on the market. There were no drying cabinets on the market. Why is it now there because you know they they know okay the washer disinfectant it has to it has the 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 procedure of cleaning and then washing disinfection uh, and it's it's a reproducible system so when you just just should um, invest in a sink with some a water pit, pistol or um, maybe a leakage test but then still uh, you cannot control those five steps leakage test. You have you just have to ask to, to ask the, the technician did you do it and they say yes or no but how did they do it nobody was demanding that that question so I, I don't have a real question what is the place of technology in pre-cleaning yeah of course the device that we invented um, that's yeah this is a device with full and track and trace and, and everything so you you can really avoid any human mistakes and that's the that's the, that's the reason why I was investing all my money, private money, in my in in this technology because uh, in in it is the most needed to to really understand to really to be sure that every single pre cleaning is a reproducible system. So um, an endoscope with with less channels needs less time, but still it has to be well done. You see, so and that's no, absolutely this is this is a fantastic point uh, uh, about making sure that those pre-cleaning steps, uh, we have to make sure that they are executed and they are executed properly. So uh, if we can bring technology into, into this world to help with those efforts, this is already going to be a big step forward to making sure that um, the processes are executed correctly. Well, yeah, but what um... What we see also, it's a little, maybe the, the, uh, also an answer on, on, the, on the, the first question or the second question, is also people have luck to, 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 to change their water for every, every, single hosp uh, every single endoscope. So sometimes I see in the morning they add water and, and detergent in the, in the sink, and at 12 noon they're still using the same water, <laughs> the same water. So it's, Oof. yeah. <laughs> And then, then, then I have to explain you. You know, after you you ate your your dinner, you you you're washing your plates, and, and and otherwise, you know, maybe you have to eat every day on uh, about on, on the on the same plate without without cleaning it. And I say no, that's not normal. I say yeah, but that's just eating. You know, uh, with endoscope is really going in into your body. Um, it has a lot of influence of bacteria and cross contamination. And then, yeah, then there is a little movement, but it's it's step by step. It's a little bit slow, but we are not giving up. We are just going for that. Okay, yeah. I, I was just going to say, I think those um, <clears throat> really sort of basic analogies are key. Um, a colleague of mine used to say with surgical instruments, you know, a, a test of like, would you stir your tea with it? You know, if it's something you should be able to because it's cleaned and sterile, you should be quite confident to pick up any instrument from a tray and stir your cup of tea with it and drink it. Um, and I think it's those getting really on those basic levels to make people understand how important it is. Um, Sorry, Pavel, I interrupted. Uh, uh, absolutely. No, 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 no worries. Um, I actually had uh, Matthew in mind here because, Nancy, you mentioned uh, chemicals uh, for yeah. for pre-cleaning and, and how it all sort of interacts because we, we can see straight away that those are not uh, simple procedures that, uh, you know, only one person with one set of things can, can do, but it's always uh, a combination of um, different elements that need to come into play. So, Matthew, 
could you sort of uh, tell us how um, how do you approach or how the chemistry world approaches the the pre cleaning steps and what is their uh, what is their goal at the moment to uh, to improve the processes? Well, well, basically, uh, the, um, in the early days when I first uh, was in sterile services and then I was selling chemistries. Um, all we had was like dishwasher chemistry. So chemistries that were used uh, for cleaning knives and forks, spoons, you know, plates. And what's happened is the chemistries have evolved over time. Um, so uh, there's a lot more thought about the enzymes that are in, in a chemistry to ensure that the enzymes break down the uh, different elements of the soil. Also, um, as we're talking about ultrasonics, um, there, there is slowly a uh, move back to using ultrasonics more in pre-cleaning. As medical devices become more complex, uh, then, you know, there is a, a, a need for ultrasonics in the pre-clean. I've always been a big fan of ultrasonics. Uh, and especially with the, the robotic instrumentation, I mean, there's a couple of uh, um, options out there for robotics now. But I imagine both companies would have an element of ultrasonic cleaning in their recommendation as their instruments become more complex. So uh, when it comes to uh, technology and pre-cleaning, uh, I, I had a thought while you, while you guys were talking earlier about it's all about making the, um, the operator's life easier. So if there's a way that we can make the, their life easier, I mean, there's a dispenser pump on the market where uh, literally it will monitor the uh, temperature of the sink and um, you, ju you just wave a hand down uh, by the side of the unit uh, to, to activate the soap. So what, I, what I'm hoping uh, with, with companies like yourself we're, we're, uh, and, and us, uh, we'll see things improving in pre-cleaning and becoming more sort of more mechanized instead of just uh, dumping it in the sink and expecting the soaking to do the job. Yeah. Now, this is this is excellent as a as a point of discussion. What what else could we do? Uh, what other technologies uh, could we bring to make uh, um, technicians lives uh, easier? And that quite nicely links us to to the next question about uh, um, measuring or somehow evaluating different elements of that pre-cleaning process because uh, as as Nancy mentioned earlier on um, the only for, for many cases the only uh, guarantee or the only evidence of uh, that particular process being done is a word of a technician that says yes I've done it so uh, what do you think or how do we how can we measure or evaluate the the pre-cleaning performance why is it so difficult well uh, why is it so difficult is um, because the circumstances in every single hospital you know the water qualities uh, are, are also a very very interesting uh, issue um, uh, yeah how do they perform you know you Every, every single hospital do it on a, on a different way. Um, how can you, how can you um, uh, evaluate or how can you, um, how do you say that? Um, evaluate not. Um, oh, we don't, I'm looking for that, for that word. Uh, validate. How can you validate? You can, you can validate your washer disinfector, wash drying cabinets, ultrasonic cleaners, can you even uh, validate? But at the moment, with just a simple thing, uh, there has to be a, a, a system to, to, to create a validation uh, about pre-cleaning. But at the moment, we, 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 there, is, there, is no, no, there is no added things on it. So you cannot validate anything when it's just a simple sink and, and just a person in, in front of the sink. So Sorry, no, I, can, I can add something to this. Uh, if the customer is using an enzymatic uh, product, uh, yep. there are sort of those dip type strips uh, that you can put into the sink uh, to measure enzymatic uh, activity. And also, if you had a process challenge device that was specifically designed for manual cleaning, so literally um, you would take a random sink in the day 
assume that you're putting the correct amount of enzymatic in there. So there's a way of measuring the enzymatic activity, but also if you have a, a custom-made PCD for manual cleaning, you should literally be able to pop it in there for the designated uh, amount of time, and then it should it should give you a result uh, if if also the the sink is is cleaning. But but I'm a big fan of uh, actually having a sink that has ultrasonic action. So basically, you could use it as a sink, or you can t literally um, flick a button and it becomes an ultrasonic. Yeah, but it's not suitable, I think, with flexible endoscopes. Oh no, sorry, I'm I'm thinking from a. Um, oh well, you could do that. You could do that for flexible endoscopes, not for, ultrasonically. Sorry, um, I was talking more general terms. So uh, an ultrasonic sink for surgical instruments. Yes. But, yeah. yeah, but for endoscopes, you could use a uh, an an enzyme uh, uh, detection strip and uh, a, a a a modified. A PCD. That that's uh, that's what I'm thinking moving forward. Okay, but that one is of the things that uh, I'll just pick up on one okay. element over here. Uh, what what Daniel mentioned about uh, you know seeing you at Medica once, and uh, first time I saw uh, one of your ideas where you film or, or make a little video recording of certain elements of the process being actually done. This is a very, very simple, but yet super effective way of um, of just making that little effort to say, yes, we have made sure that this particular step was done correctly. And you can always go back to it and see how uh, how it works. So I, I think that uh, the, the measurement of performance, it's not always about getting um, uh getting a device or or a system in place to to tell you what it is but also having this being recorded and uh, and being able to track it back to the to the point of uh, um of that one particular instrument being actually um reprocessed in, in such a way so that that's definitely one of a uh, a clever ways of uh, of doing it and it doesn't take uh that much uh, time or effort to, to actually do. It's also um, a, a really great help for the, the person who um, does the cleaning for that moment because um, it's not always good that it's it's recorded, it's one step, but it's also good that they can follow it on the screen, like how, how many uh, minutes do I need to brush this channel? So they can also follow it on the screen and every step is recorded or is tracked and traced but the employee can also follow it up. So mm -hmm. every procedure is going to be the same depending on, on the type mm -hmm. of endoscope, but also the employee, it's, it's made much simpler for her to, or him to follow the process. So first this step, then the second and the third and the fourth. And I think that's also a big help. So also for the, the patient, of course, making sure the device is cleaned properly at the instrument, but also for the employee making sure every step is performed. So it, it kind of goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's absolutely perfect. Um, Daniel, I'm thinking that this very nicely links us with uh, the question about the future technologies, correct? Yeah, Yeah. no, it's certainly. Yeah, um, I think obviously, look, I've written down a couple of points actually just before we um, uh, before we go on to that and they're not uh, it's not anything particularly groundbreaking but I've just just written down again education which has been a running theme through these um, through these podcasts and I think it's not not that particularly um, end users don't want to do things the right way I think it's sometimes missing pieces of the jigsaw of education um, for instance we did a um, a webinar not long ago on flexible endoscopy and a basic introduction into it and the questions all at the end were, were, were mainly trying to get information about cleaning and, and we we put across that the main thing you want to look out for for cost wise for, for ending up having to a costly repair on a flexible endoscope was moisture ingress and there were multiple questions of how do we how do we test for moisture ingress how do we get this right you know so I think there are um the desire is there, but perhaps the knowledge isn't 
you know as 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 freely freely available so uh, i applaud you for trying to um to sort of try and put this information out there but pavel don't you think that's just seems to be education wise just seems it's definitely this gap isn't absolutely it? absolutely and and th that element of education and linking it with with motivation for for the technicians this is i, I think for me this is the, the 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 greatest outtake from from this uh from this episode to to find out how we can actually uh provide education so it also um motivates people to to do things better to pay uh, greater attention to uh, to detail and make things uh, properly. Well, uh, I agree with that because every time when we are organizing an education day, it's uh, immediately fully booked. So the the technicians and people who are really working in hospitals, there is a demand for it. But sometimes they say also um, it's not. Yeah, sometimes they, they, it was not um, allowed anymore to follow classes. But I think um, at the moment the, the issues are growing and growing that hospitals they will reward on uh, they will uh, define that the education is the most important. So, but every every time when we are organ organizing uh, an education day in 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 minutes or no not in minutes I'm I'm, I'm liar <laughs> but uh, no but uh, you know in a few hours our our education day is is fully booked. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we mm. still have to 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 go on 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 that side, and and at the same time, yeah, marketing is also a very very important thing. Not only because of your device, because of your brand, but also to 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 figure out and to to show people how it can be easier. And and with with a good marketing plan, uh, I think we 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 are uh, the the knowledge the knowledge of 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 our device will will. Uh, will enter in every single hospital, but it takes a lot of time. That's what we are. That's our experience also, you know, so. Uh... Yeah, no, I think um, it's it, it just uh, you've got this scenario where you were describing people looking to not necessarily to have the time to do all the processes correctly and obviously tying into that, looking to cut down costs. But if we if we sort of parallel that to the, the, the biggest and most costly issue with flexible endoscopes is moisture ingress. Obviously, if you do all the processes correctly, you're going to pick up these problems and therefore save the big costs, you know, the sort of £20,000 repair or a replacement. So I think it's just changing the thought process. Um, apologies, I jumped in there before the last question. Pavel, did you want to? Um, no, uh, no, no problem at all. I think the conversation led uh, is leading to it one way or another, because the, the last question I have, knowing how uh, innovative um, Ultrasonic uh, is and, and how they think about improvements in um, in reprocessing of both surgical instruments and, uh, and flexible endoscopes, I wanted uh, them to, to tell us uh, more about the future and uh, where they still see areas where clever solutions can still improve cleaning. Well, <laughs> well um, no, we, uh, we, we're quiet because before um, our device uh, comes in the picture, there still needs to be some bedside cleaning to be done. So that's also so another process that we're trying to uh, figure out how we can make it easier easier for the, the employee, but also more uh, track and traceable. So we're, we're laying focus on this subject as well, because it's, it's kind of with all the steps. If one step isn't performed well, it's quite maybe useless is, is, is a big word, but it's, it's less uh, useless to perform the other steps. Um, so this is why now we're also focusing on the, on the bedside cleaning. Yeah, the thing is that, you know, um, Every single night or every moment I, I'm, I, 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 that is available, I, I'm always reading all kind of uh, articles. And a certain moment there was an article. Okay, now we, we are performing the bed, the, the pre-cleaning and the washer disinfector, and it's still not good enough. What can we do better? So, and that's why I say, okay, you know, let's get in the car and visit some hospitals and figure out how they are performing the bedside cleaning. And you cannot imagine what I saw. Some of them, they're just use, using water. Some of them, they're never doing it because there's no time. Some of them, they say, yeah, we uh, we just rinse till uh, the tube. We, you have a transparent tube. When the transparent tube is 
a little bit, you know, a little bit more clear, then we think it's 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 well done. No, it's not well done because when you read into the manual of Olympus, for example, for a duodenoscope, you have to respect 500 milliliter of water during the bedside cleaning. Nobody is doing this. Can you imagine? This is not normal. So that's why we we have uh, uh, after tomorrow. I have um, uh, so we are innovating now also a bedside cleaning device. And uh, after tomorrow, so Wednesday, I will uh, I will see the prototype. So we are we are not ready for the market, but we have already a prototype. And then we have to discuss with a lot of hospitals, also in Saudi Arabia, because we we have now also a client in Saudi Arabia, to figure out what do you think about this. How should we help with on a better way? Uh, do you like it? Do you don't you like it? Why don't you like it? You know, we we have to to figure it out now. What what uh, how people are thinking about this invention? Let's say, because it's it's you know we are we adding all the time a lot of money and of course energy. But energy I I'm I'm full with with on energy. No no problem. But the money is always an issue. So <laughs> we have to figure out that we are in the right way, you know, and, yeah. uh, and and that's that's the main thing. I think the the more the more experience we have, the more control we there should be on on on, on that specific thing. Uh, the better the future will be for every single patient. This is absolutely fantastic, you know, to to see how you approach the um, the technologies in general. So uh, you looked at the entire process, and I'm so happy to hear that uh, you are looking at the moment right after the procedure is uh, is finished and uh, you, you sort of think about your decontamination process right from that outset and this is fantastic that uh, you're already sort of uh, taking steps forward to uh, to address those points because it's all a cascade of different steps and uh, we know that in order to improve it we have to make sure that even right at the very beginning they are they are performed correctly so uh, um, that's uh, fantastic thank you <laughs> okay. Now that's that is that is in that is interesting to hear, and actually, um, I think that again parallels with surgical instruments. I think Matthew and I have discussed around the you know the immediate post-operative use and and cleaning and how how much of an effect that has on on not only the cleanliness of the instruments but the condition of the instruments as well. So. I think this is really exciting to hear you've got um, this new innovation coming, but I do think this is a really exciting area in general for other medical devices as well, don't you think, Matthew? Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, uh, the, the the UK guidance um, recommends pre-cleaning, both in sterile services and, and endoscopy, because it's been proven that if you can keep the um, soil moist, uh, you stand a lot more of a chance of being able to remove it. So I totally agree. The the bedside cleaning is so important. In the UK, it has improved immensely. Uh, there's a lot more customers now in the UK using a bedside kit of some description. Uh, when I first um, got involved in endoscopy, um, you'd be lucky if they drew drew detergent up through a bucket on the floor. You know, and uh, and then how long was that detergent sitting in that bucket? And also, um, what was the dilution rate of that product? And and as we saw that you hinted on early, some some don't even bother pre-cleaning because they don't have the time to pre-clean. Some just wa use water to 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 pre-clean endoscopes. So, I I. I am optimistic that we are moving in the right direction. My concern is what you were saying earlier. It's it's a lot to do with time. They will always complain they don't have enough time to pre-clean. And the other thing is cost. Uh, there seems to be, a, I can't speak for Belgium, but in the UK, there seems to be this rush to going for the cheapest products that, that they could possibly get. And going back to what you said earlier about validation, you know, a lot of these products have never been validated, but they buy them because they're cheap. So yeah, yeah, mm. I have the same experience in Belgian hospitals. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's it it's good to hear that we're all on on the same page. Look, this has been an excellent um, episode. Delighted that that you've both been able to join us. Many thanks to my colleagues also. And thank uh, you very much, we'd, guys. we'd love we'd love to have you um we'd love to have you back on in the future. So we're, we'll keep in touch. With, for sure. Thank you. Well, Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. It was fantastic. Yeah. Have a nice yeah, week.
You have been listening to Deconversations. Join us soon for new episodes.